Hi guys! Have you ever tested your fitness level without going to a lab and run with a mask on a treadmill? As I said in this video, I will do some changes in my training for this year in hope to get faster on shorter distances. And I also want to measure my fitness level to see if I improve as planned. But neither do I have the time nor the desire to go to a lab and do that. So I will therefore measure my fitness level by doing a Cooper test. So first in this video, I will explain what a Cooper test is and how to do it. And then how you can use your test results to compare your performance to the norms for both your age and your gender. And I will also give you the calculation formula for estimating your VO2 max. And I usually do this test in the beginning of the year, but I started this year first taking my third anti-COVID shot, which gave me some fever. And then a week later, I also caught COVID from my son. And in the same time, I also strained my right hamstring. So since the Cooper test is tough on your body and your heart, I couldn't go through with it until now in March. And although I don't feel like I'm back to my normal self in regards of running, I think it's even more important to do the test to hopefully in a couple of months see some improvements. And you will also in this video follow along when I do the Cooper test myself. And by the way, welcome to my channel where I make videos that I hope will inspire you to improve your running and to not set any limits on what you can accomplish. Before I do a Cooper test, I will run easy for about 20 to 25 minutes. And I know for some that's a pretty long warm up, but as a middle-aged runner, that's what I need to stay injury free. And at the same time, I can tell you about the history behind the Cooper test and how you should go about doing it. So the Cooper test was designed for the US military in the 60s. And it's a great way to measure your oxygen uptake capacity, also called your VO2 max, without running on a treadmill in a lab. So in short, VO2 max can be said to be a measure of how well the heart sends out oxygen to the working muscles and how good the muscles are at assimilating the oxygen they receive. So the test is very easy. Or you can say it's easy to implement, but it's pretty challenging to do. So you will simply run for 12 minutes as fast as you can. And you should run as far as possible during that time. The correlation between doing a lab test on a treadmill and a Cooper test has been proven to be almost 0.9. So I will finish my warm up and I will get back to you soon. Bye. So I'm done with my warm up. It was around 20, 21 minutes with a pace of uh, 5, 30 minutes per kilometer. So first you need to find a fairly flat stretch. And if you can run it as a loop, it's even better. Like a running track, that would be perfect. But for me, the nearest track is closed now. So I would do the test here where it's a loop of somewhere around eight to 900 meters and almost no elevation. If you in the future want to compare your stats over time, you should choose a place where you can do your Cooper test more than once. In that way, the comparison will be more precise. And you will also need to run with a watch to see the time and how far you have run. Since the test is for 12 minutes, you could also use the 12 minute countdown function on your watch. So you can put all your focus on your running. And if you have a friend that can keep track of both the distance and the time, that's even better. So when you're all set, you just start your watch and you just run. And don't hold back. It should be a near death experience. The hard part besides the run itself is to run as fast as you can, but not faster than you can run for 12 minutes. And that may be the case with me today because I have no idea about my shape since I haven't been able to train as usual. Since I have done my warm up, partly talking to you guys, it's time for me to begin the Cooper test. And I will get back to you soon and hopefully totally exhausted, but in a good way. And I have no idea how this will go since I lost some of my shape during COVID a couple of months ago, but all the more interesting this will be. So let's do this.
really did my best. It was 12 minutes, 3 seconds. I think I kept almost the same pace all through the pets and that's what you're aiming for. So I'm satisfied with that. I don't think the pace was as I wanted it to be. So now I will be doing a cool down. I will be I will run home, cool down for about 20 minutes. And then I will take a shower and a small recovery meal. And then I will get back to you and we will analyze the results and I will show you how you can do to analyze your results and I will show you the charge. Yeah, that's about it. See you soon. Bye. So hi guys, I'm home again after a small recovery meal and a shower. And now let's dive into my numbers. I can see both on my watch of course and on Strava that I ran a little more than 2800 meters. So I'm pretty curious about my running shape, but I know that last year I would have managed to run 3000 meters, but this is what it is and we have something to work on. And when I have that number, I can see how I stand in regards to my gender and age. Since I'm a 46 year young female and I ran more than 2300 meters, you can see here that I ended up in this field. And that's very good and it's in comparison to others of the same gender and age. But what about my VO2 max? The formula for calculating your VO2 max after Cooper test is this formula, but you can also put your number in a calculator online like this one. So I will just put in first female, age 46, 12 minute run, 2850 meters and calculate. And then you can see I have a view to max of 52.41 with a score of 101 and it says excellent. And you can also look at this chart, but in this chart you can see that I have a view to max of 54. So it differs some from the calculator, but my view to max is somewhere around those numbers. And I will leave a link to the calculator in the description. And if we look into the norms of women in my age, we can see that it's pretty good for an average distance runner like me. But I will use this test not so much to see my stats in comparison to others, but to see how my fitness level will differ over time. And I will do this test again again in maybe two months and use this distance as a comparison. And I will leave a link to this chart in the description below. And as I said in this video, your VO2 max decreases with age, but it's also due to reduced training volume and that we usually live a more inactive life with age and suffers from more injuries that make it impossible to exercise. I will not say that you should do this test instead of VO2 max test in a lab. That's up to you, but for most of us, this test is enough to estimate your fitness level. So you can often feel if you're in a good shape or not, but I like to have a number to compare with and not just go by feeling. It's hard to do a Cooper test, so therefore I think you should not do it too often. But please tell me in the comments below if you have done some kind of fitness test, maybe you have done a Cooper test, or if it's in your future plans. And I will do this test again in maybe May or June and then I will make a new video about that where I will share my training from now till then. And to be sure not to miss that you can subscribe to my channel and have a nice run. See you soon. Bye!